Hello everyone, welcome to the channel TopGate. In this video, I will discuss next algorithm of uh, CPU scheduling. And this algorithm is called as the shortest job first scheduling. Clear? Now, in the previous lecture, I have discussed what is FCFS scheduling. And uh, I have also discussed what is the problem associated with FCFS scheduling. Clear? So, in FCFS scheduling, the problem that is there is called as the convoy effect. What is convoy effect? The convoy effect is the effect in which the process having the shorter burst time wait for the process having the higher burst time. Okay? And that is the reason why the waiting time was increased so much in FCFS scheduling because of the convoy effect. Why? Because the process having the lower CPU burst time are waiting for a longer time for the process having the higher burst times. Now, to get rid of that problem, we have another algorithm that is called as the SJF scheduling, that is shortest job first. Clear? Now, in the previous algorithm, that, that is FCFS, we were not considering their uh, burst times. Fine? We were only considering their arrival time. That is, if the pro process is arriving first, we are scheduling it first. Or if the process wants to be scheduled first, then it has to arrive early. Fine. But in this one, we will follow the greedy approach. That is, we will schedule that process first, which is having the shorter burst time. Clear? So if suppose there are three process and out of those three process, uh, one is having uh, the burst time of one, one is having the burst time of two, one is having the burst time of three. So out of these three, the first process is having the lower burst time, the shortest burst time. That is why it will be scheduled first. Now in this one, we will not take care of the arrival times. We will only take care of the burst time. If it is shorter, we will schedule it first. Clear? So that is why we say that it is a greedy algorithm. And the FCFS was not a greedy algorithm. Why? Because, because we were uh, saying that if the process is arriving first, we are scheduling it first. But in this one, if the process is arriving early or if it is arriving late or it is having a high priority or it is having a low priority, we will not take care of any of these things. We will only take care of the process burst time. If it is shorter, we will schedule it first. If it is not shorter, we have to make that process wait. Clear? So that is the, I mean, basic concept of SJF scheduling. Now, so I'll tell you with the help of these three points, what is SJF and then we'll go on straight away to the example. Clear? Now, the, uh, the first point says that the SJF algorithm has two variants. So we have already studied that every scheduling algorithm, uh, either they'll be solved with the help of uh, preemptive approach or with the help of non-preemptive approach. This algorithm that is shortest job first is uh, having two variants. One is a preemptive one, one is a non-preemptive one. That is, we'll solve it with the help of the preemptive approach as well as the non-preemptive approach. Clear? Second thing, second point says, out of all available processes, CPU is assigned to the process having the smallest burst time. That is, we are talking about the available process only. That is, suppose uh, there are three processes which are waiting there in the RAM. So these are the available process because they are already there into the RAM and they are ready for their execution. Clear? So if they are ready for their execution, then I will see that among these three process, which one is having the shorter burst time? If anyone is having the shorter burst time, I will schedule it first. Clear? Third point, in case of tie, that is, uh, suppose there are two process, they are having the same burst time. Clear? So in that case, what we'll do? We will break this tie with the help of the FCFS algorithm. That is, we'll use FCFS. That is, uh, whatever process is coming first, is written first, I will schedule it first. Clear? So let's start with the example. So this example, uh, the, we'll solve this with the help of the non-preemptive approach. So I will do this with the help of non-preemptive. And then in the next video, we'll solve it with the help of the preemptive approach also. Fine? So in this one, we are only sticking to non-preemptive approach. Now, this Example has one, two, three, four, five. We have five process and for these process, we are having the arrival times and their burst times. Fine. We have to schedule this process with the help of the non-preemptive SGF algorithm. And then based upon that, we have to make a GAN chart. And with the help of the GAN chart, we will find out the average waiting time and the average turnaround time. Clear? So, uh, after solving the question and after uh, finding out the average waiting and average channel time, I will tell you one very interesting thing about this uh, particular uh, algorithm. Clear? So, 
let's start with this one that is we are having five process so i will make a gan chart now so on this one we are initially at time zero clear now i'll see in this one that at time zero is there any process which is arriving in the ram so there is no zero in this one therefore there is no process which has been arrived into the ram in the ram at point zero so i don't have to do anything right now the so next thing i'll see next i'll see that p1 is arriving at type 1 so therefore from 0 to 1 the cpu has to remain idle why because there is no process in the ram so it has to remain idle no issues in that fine so at point number 1 this p1 will start now let's see the burst time the burst time as the burst time says that process p3 is having the shorter burst time that is 2 P2 is having the second shorter burst time, that is 3. But we will not be able to schedule 2 in the beginning. Why? Because this process is arriving at time 6. And currently we are at time 1. So at time 1, there is only one process. So if there is only one process, there is no competition. So we only have one choice, that is we have to schedule that process at any cost. Clear? So I will start this process P1. So this P1 will start and P1 will try for how many units? It will try for 7 units. Clear? So, since it is a non-preemptive approach, so if this P1 starts, it has to complete. It has to take for 7 units on the CPU. Clear? So, it will start at 1 and it will complete its work at 1, 2, 8 and this will go out of the RAM and it will be terminated. Fine? Now, this process does not exist in the RAM at all now. Clear? Now, this P1 is gone. Now, we have P2, P3, P4 and P5. And currently, we are at time 8. So, I will see that till time 8, how many are the process which has been arrived. So, I can see that P2 has arrived at 3, P3 has arrived at 6, P4 has arrived at 7, P5 has still not arrived. So, P5 is not there in the RAM. So, right now, P2, P3, P4, there are only 3 processes in the RAM and the competition is between these 3 processes. Fine. So, now, between P2, P3 and P4, I will take a greedy approach. That is, whoever is having the shorter burst time, that will be scheduled first. So, out of these 3, 2 and 10, this P3 is having the shorter burst time. So, at 8, P3 will come and since it is a non-preemptive algorithm, therefore, this P3 will take over whole 2 units. So, it will start at 8 and it will complete its work at 10. So, this will also complete and terminate. It will also go out of the RAM. Fine. Now we are at time 10. Now at time 10, we can see that P5 has also arrived. It arrived at 9. Fine. But we are at 10 right now. So the competition is between P2, P4 and P5. P3 and P1 has already finished. So competition is between P2, P4 and P5. So again, I will take a greedy approach. Which one is shorter among these three? That will be scheduled first. So among these three, P2 is the shorter one. So P2 will take over the CPU and it will start at 10. It will complete its work at 13. So this will also complete and terminate and goes out of the RAM. Clear? Now we are at time 13. No new process has arrived. There are only two processes in the RAM. P4 and P5 and the competition is between P4 and P5 only. Out of these P4 and P5, P5 is the shorter one. So P5 will take over the CPU and from 13, it will start at 13 and go till 21. So it will also complete its work and go out of the RAM. Clear? Now the last process is left that is P4. P4 starts at 21. It will complete its work at 31. Clear? So, this is the GAN chart. So, if we can draw the GAN chart correctly, then everything will be correct. That is, we only have to do certain calculations. So, 80% of our work is completed now. Right? Remaining 20% is left. That will do. Now, in the previous lecture, in the previous uh, algorithm that is FCFS, I uh, taught you that how to calculate the waiting time and the turnaround time. And that calculation was a little bit different one. In this one, I will tell you another simple approach. You can calculate waiting time, turnaround time with this approach also. Fine. So, we have in this one the completion time. So, completion time is the time at which the process is completing its work and exiting of the RAM. So, P1 I will see. So, P1 if I see, P1 is completing its work at 8. So, I will write simply 8 here. P2, P2 is completing its work at 13. So, I will simply write 13 here. 
Then P3, P3 is completing its work at 10. So I'll write simply 10 here. P4 is completing its work at 31. So I'll write 31 here. And P5 is completing its work at 21. So I'll write 21 here. So this is done. Now, next thing is we have to calculate the turnaround time. So we already know what is turnaround time. So this time I'll calculate turnaround time with the help of two things that is the completion time minus the arrival time. So we have the completion time also, we have the arrival time also. So I'll simply do completion time minus arrival time. So what I will do simply I will write 8, 13, 10, 31. 21 and then minus and then minus arrival time so arrival times are 1 3 6 7 9 so 1 3 6 7 9 so i'll just calculate quickly because it should not take more than 3 4 minutes to solve this question it should only take 3 4 minutes if you are taking more than that then uh, i mean uh, you won't be able to do other questions you may miss uh, other questions okay so we have to calculate very very fast so 8 minus 1 is 7 13 minus 3 is 10 10 minus 6 is 4 31 minus 7 is 24 21 minus 9 is uh, it is uh, 12 then so we have done this. Now the next thing is the waiting time. So waiting time I'll cal calculate with the help of the turnaround time minus the burst time. So I'll simply write turnaround time 7, 10, 4, 24, 12 and then I'll put minus quickly. And then the burst time. Burst times are 7, 3, 2, 10, 8. So 7, 3, 2, 10, 8. So I'll calculate quickly 7 minus 7 is 0, 10 minus 3 is 7, 4 minus 2 is 2, 24 minus 10 is 14 and 12 minus 8 is 4. So we have got this thing, we have got the turnaround time of the processes, we have got the waiting time of the process. Now we only have to calculate the average waiting time and average turnaround time. So average waiting time is equal to, we have uh, 0 plus 7 plus 2 plus 14 plus 4 divided by we have 5 process 5 so that will give us uh, 7 plus 2 is 9 9 plus 14 is 23 23 plus 4 is 27 so it is 27 divided by 5 that will give me 5.4 clear now the next thing is average turn around time so average turn around time is uh, we have this one, so I'll quick, quickly write this 7 plus 10 plus 4, 10 plus 4 plus 24 plus 12 divided by 5. We have 5 process, so quickly sum this up. So 7 plus 10, 17, 17 plus 4 is 21, 21 plus 24, it is 45, 44 plus uh, 45 plus 12 is uh 57 divided by 5 so that will give you 1 1 point uh 4 so your average turnaround time is 11.4 average waiting time is 5.4 fine so that we have calculated now in the in the starting i told you that i'll tell you something very interesting about this algorithm the most interesting thing about this algorithm is that the, uh, this out of all the algorithms this algorithm will be having the shortest average waiting time so if anywhere they ask you in any question they ask you uh, which algorithm is having the shortest average time then your answer will be this one because this shortest job uh, shortest job first algorithm will be uh, giving you the least waiting time clear so thank you so much